How you doing, St. Christopher's? Hope you all had a great Easter, a great break, and a raring to go uh, for this new term in school. And in our worship videos uh, this term, this half term, we're looking at the book of uh, Romans, written by the Apostle Paul uh, to the church in Rome. And this is the epicentre of the empire. You know, this is uh, writing a letter to the Christians, which is this minority group, uh, right at the heart of the Roman Empire, who were the most powerful force on the planet at the time. And this is what Paul says to the Roman church. He says this, Romans 12, verse 1, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, this this verse is loaded uh, with loads of big ideas. And I'm sure during your assemblies this week and during your form worship this week, there'll be loads of different um, ideas uh, that you'll be looking at from this scripture. But I just want to talk about two of the uh, ideas from this passage, a living sacrifice and uh, worship. So when we think about a living sacrifice, I don't know what images come to your mind. Uh, you know, a living sacrifice doesn't mean harming ourselves. It doesn't mean hurting ourselves, but instead, this idea of a living sacrifice means we present ourselves to God. And all of us, every, every part of who we are, our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, that's really important to remember, isn't it, sometimes, that, that you matter, but you're more than just matter. Uh, you're more than just a physical body. You know, you've got a brain, you've got a mind, you, you think, you imagine, you dream. Uh, you've also got a soul, which is our emotions, and you've got a spirit, um, which is which is the place where God dwells within us. You know, you you are you are more than meets the eye. You are more valuable than you know you are. You are mind, body, soul, and spirit. So, being a living sacrifice means we present ourselves, all of ourselves, our mind, our body, our soul, and our spirit. Uh, and say to God, set me apart. That's what it means to be holy. Being holy doesn't mean being perfect. Being holy means being set apart, living differently. Uh, set apart, uh, and it's present ourselves to God saying, set me apart and help me live for you. Help me live differently in the world around me. Help me live differently to the world around me. So a living sacrifice isn't about hurting ourselves or harming ourselves, but instead it's presenting ourselves to God asking him to set us apart and asking him uh, to help us live for him. So Paul urges us, in view of God's mercy, in view of God's kindness, in view of God's grace, in view of God's love, that we would offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our true and proper worship. So what is worship? You know, we call this time form worship time. And you have your collective worship in assemblies and maybe you go to a church on a Sunday or youth church on a Wednesday. And, you know, so maybe you've been in uh, times of worship, you know, and worship includes singing, singing songs of worship and adoration, singing songs of devotion. And I've been in church all of my life. And I've been in settings where there's been thousands of people in a room arms lifted high, singing songs of worship and devotion, jumping and bouncing, you know, praising God. I'm regularly in my local church, Life Church, I'm regularly uh, with a few hundred people worshipping together, hands lifted high, uh, songs of devotion, songs of worship. I've also been in a setting with a small group of people, one or two people in a living room or uh, in someone's front yard or in a prison uh, in a church in a prison or loads of different settings where I've been in, in worship services. So worship can be about singing songs, particularly songs of worship and adoration. Worship is about hands held high, but worship is also about lives bowed low. You now worship is about hands held high, but worship is also about lives bowed, bowed low. Worship can be about singing, but it's also about more than singing. Christian leader Louis Giglio says that worship is our response to whatever we value most in our lives. Worship is our response to whatever we value most in our lives. So today, as you're listening to these words, I want to ask you the question, what do you value most in your life? What or who do you worship? 
everybody worships. Everybody, uh, every, everybody in the whole world, everybody that believes in God and doesn't believe in God, everybody worships as part of who we are as humans. From the very beginning of time, all human civilizations have always found objects for their worship. So today, the question for you is, what do you value most in your life? What or who do you worship today? I encourage you to direct your worship to the God who is love, the God who created you, the God who knows you, the God who gives your life meaning and purpose, and the God who is 100% worth living for. So yeah, think on these things today. Think on these things this week. And uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bless you.